people my name is Lexia and welcome back to my channel or if you are new here welcome to my channel today I'm going to be talking about something that I've been very excited to talk about but didn't for a very specific reason which will be mentioned later but that is my clown tree frogs I'm finally going to um, introduce them to you reveal their names talk about how I care for them and things like that this is not going to be a clown tree frog care guide. This is just going to be what I'm currently doing and some of the research I've done I'm going to mention. Um, I will eventually put together a specific care guide, but this is going to be a, an introduction, what's working for me, how they're doing, and really showing them to you guys for the first time um, since I got them at the Reptilian Nation Expo on March 28th. So it's been well over a month now. I was just trying to make sure that they were settled in and doing well. So yeah, super excited to show them to you guys. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right guys, so getting right into the video, I am so super excited to tell you guys about my clown tree frogs. Obviously, we all know I have them. I mentioned them in my Reptilian Nation Expo video that I did, which is going to be linked. Um, I'm going to have a little link up above somewhere. Still can't remember which side it's on whenever it shows up on the computer, so it is what it is. But that's going to be linked up above where I kind of talk about how I got them. I didn't talk about them sooner because I wanted to ensure that they had kind of a full month to settle in to ensure there were no complications, um, that we didn't lose any one of them, that they all were healthy and thriving before I really um, introduced them to you guys and started talking about their care and how I've been taking care of them. So now that, le now that, that little bit is covered, we're going to go into their names because their names are adorable. I'm so, I love them so much. And with, you know, pretty much all my videos, I'm going to ramble on about how much I love them because they're so cute and they just have a big place in my heart. Even though they're so tiny, they have a big place in my heart. Anyway, their names are chosen off of the bigger, bigger, even though they're very tiny, bigger one's name. Um, I let my little cousin, who I haven't seen in a very long time and I miss very dearly, I let him name one of the frogs. I sent my aunt a picture and said, hey, I would really appreciate if he could do me this favor and help me name this frog. Um, and he chose the name of Dottie, which I thought was absolutely adorable. And then I formed the names Spotty and Speck after that. Um, I can tell each of them apart because Dottie does have a little bit of a darker mark in the center of his forehead if you look at him from kind of like above behind. Um, so I can tell him pretty well. He's a little bit yellower as well than the other two. Spotty is a little bit um, smaller but not he, he's not as his his yellow parts are very yellow but his darker parts are not as red as um Dottie's and then Speck is just a darker all over he is I don't know why he's so much darker all over but he is and I love him regardless I love them all they each have little things about them that makes it easy for me to tell them apart because most people probably can't tell their frogs apart. Thankfully, I can. And as I describe this, hopefully I put up the photos or remember to put up the photos of how I remember them. But Spotty, Dottie, and Speck, I love them so much. And as I said, I've had them for over a month now. Um, and they are absolutely thriving. They're doing so well. Going off of the fact that they are thriving, I'm going to kind of go into how I've been taking care of them and explain it to you guys. Um, once again, this is not really a care guide. This is just what I've been doing and what's working for me. They are once again doing so well and seem to be having no problems, knock on wood. And I'm just, again, so excited to finally be able to talk about them and share them with you guys. So moving directly into the enclosure itself, um, I made a video last year in June of a bioactive enclosure build I did. Um, this is the picture of it when I originally built it. And then here's a picture of it now. As you can see, it has grown out quite a bit, which makes me really, really happy. Um, I did replace uh, one of the plants down in the corner. I. I replaced it with a um, silver peperoma 
Capitera. So really excited about how well that's doing. And the enclosure itself um, was doing really good before I introduced the frogs into it and seems to be having zero issues since I introduced it. Of course, I did wait almost eight months before putting the frogs into it, but that was just because I had it in my head that I wanted this enclosure for either clown or hourglass frogs specifically, which I will kind of get into in a minute. But I wanted it specifically for a small tree frog breed and had it set in my head that nothing else would go into this enclosure except for small tree frog breeds and um, that's what it was set up for. As you can see, I kind of have a little hidey hole which one of my tree frogs uses quite frequently. I have some sphagnum moss, sphagnum moss stuffed in there and I missed it down so it's kind of a humid hide. I also have a humid um, coconut on the bottom of the enclosure just in case they feel like they want to go in there and get a boost of humidity. And then I also have um, some extra little spaces in the log where Dottie tends to sleep. You can kind of see him peeking out on the top right here. And then um, just lots of hiding places for them and it's a very naturalistic, bioactive enclosure that I'm very proud of and seems to be doing very well. So that's the enclosure that they're in. It is a 12 by 12 by 18 and that was the recommended size by the Josh's Frogs website for two to three adults or juvenile clown tree frogs which I have three. I'm not going to do any more than three. Um, they do really well in groups though so I didn't want to get just one or two because I felt like that just one was obviously not enough because they like being in groups. Two, I was like, okay, they could be buddies or they could hate each other. Maybe having a third one in there will kind of mediate the um, the playing field, like kind of make it easier to where they don't all hate each other. They don't all like each other. I don't know. I just, I thought three would be the correct number of frogs to have in this enclosure. Um, and going off of the research I've done, two to three juveniles or adults can live very comfortably in this size enclosure so that is what I went with. Moving on from the enclosure um, itself like the bioactive and everything as you can see I have a water dish down at the bottom. I clean out the water daily. Um, I clean it out once in the morning, spray it down, get all new water and then the same at night because frogs do soak in the water quite frequently and they can absorb um, toxins through their skin if you don't clean it out and they're sitting in their own feces or something like that. It can be very detrimental to their health so I just ensure that I clean it regularly regularly two times a day um, is my goal. I for sure at least do it once a day but I really try to do it two times a day. I think I've only missed that goal three or four times since I've gotten them so I think I've been doing a pretty good job with that and it's just always good with any frog species that you make sure that they have clean water available, them, available to them daily um, but for Frogs that require a little bit of a higher humidity like clown tree frogs, you want to ensure that they have a water bowl that they can soak in. And then you also want to be sure that you have a misting system. I have a um, fogger that I use to help boost humidity whenever I need to, but overall it keeps a pretty decent humidity. Um, if you can't keep a bigger humidity, get a bigger water bowl. But I, they don't need a bigger water bowl because I do keep it at the humidity it's supposed to be. Now, talking about humidity, clown tree frogs like and desire a humidity of 60 to 70 percent. I keep mine at 63, 64, so in the lower 60s, and then I spike it sometimes at night. Um, if it seems to go around, you know, 58 below that, I try, I try to spike it um, and let it slowly, gradually fall. You don't want to keep it a super high humidity all the time because that can cause skin infections in frogs, especially frogs that are not meant for 100%, 90%, 80% humidity. If you keep it too high of a humidity, they can get um, skin infections and once again, I don't want to do that for my frogs and what I'm doing right now with the lower 60s is seeming to work for them and they seem to be really happy. The plants seem to be really happy. Um, and overall the entire bioactive enclosure itself is thriving with that humidity so I'm not going to mess with that more um, than I did in the beginning whenever I was trying to figure it out. 63 to 66 is my normal range of humidity for them as of right now. 
Moving on from humidity, they like their enclosure to be mid to high 70s. Um, nothing above 80 ever because that can kill them. They are very tiny, they are very sensitive, and they have, I don't want to say specific requirements, but pretty specific requirements whenever it comes to the heat and the humidity. So those are things I don't mess with. Last time I checked, the humidity was 73 degrees, not humidity, the temperature was 73 degrees in the enclosure, and that is about what it stays at. Um, I don't have any heat bulbs or anything in there. My room is just warmer than we would like it. At night, I turn on a fan, but it doesn't seem to really do anything to the humidity of the, um, the, oh my god, the humidity or the temperature of the enclosure due to the fact that it is a box fan and it isn't pointed at the enclosure or near the enclosure. So the temperature stays pretty normal. I think the highest the temperature's gotten since um, they've been moved into the enclosure was like 76 and that's because I left the bedroom window open to get some fresh air and it was a little bit warmer outside so the room got way warmer than I wanted it to but the enclosure itself didn't get um, too warm because it is out of direct sunlight and away from the window so complete opposite corner. Um, none of my enclosures are in direct sunlight or in front of the window just so I get that cleared out and no one's concerned about that. But um, the temperatures that I aim for are the lower 70s again. That really works for them. Um, again, nothing above 80 for any type of small um, hourglass or clown tree frog. They, they should not have anything above 80 degrees whatsoever and mine seem to be doing really good in the 73, 76 range. Moving directly into the last portion of my little care, um, what's working for me is the feeding. They were originally eating about 15 to 20 of the pinhead crickets a day, according to the breeder, whenever I first got them. I've since moved them up to um, 1 fourth inch banded crickets, and they seem to be doing very well with those. I put about 15 in the um, enclosure, 15 per frog by the way, it was 15 to 20 per day for pinhead crickets. Um, so I put about 12 to 15 currently in the enclosure um, or as many as I think that is and shake them off into the enclosure um, every two or three days. Whenever I put a little bit more crickets in the enclosure, I wait a full three days before feeding them. But other than that, I do two days in between feedings um, if I don't think I put enough crickets. One thing that you need to be sure to do with um, frogs or any any insect eating um reptile or amphibian really is to ensure that they eat all of their food. So the first day I moved them over to the 1 4 inch banded, I searched the whole enclosure and sat there and stared at it for about 30 minutes to ensure that I saw no extra crickets running around because the crickets could grow to a larger size to where they could actually hurt the frogs and I didn't want that happening so I made sure that they ate the total amount of the crickets I put in there and then decided that that was okay to feed them that size and kept them at that size. Um, they're still eating that size cricket and they're doing very well with it. So uh, as I said they were eating about 15 to 20 of the pinhead crickets whenever I first got them per frog 15 to 20 that adds up very quickly. Now they eat about 12 to 15 every three days of the 1 4th inch uh, banded. Or I'll put a couple more in there if they still seem hungry. Um, I just like to do it right before bedtime. That way if I would want to, I can check in about 30 minutes to see how they're doing on the eating progress and just ensure that again, I didn't overfeed the um, frogs. So that's what I'm doing in terms of food with them and they're doing very, very well with that. Um, I think they are thriving again and the enclosure is thriving. It's just, it's going very well for all of us. Okay, so ending the video on that happy note that I've been waiting so long and I'm just, I'm so happy about this. Um, I would like to say thank you to all of you guys who made it all the way through the video. Thank you for everyone who watches my channel routinely, who keeps up with me on Instagram, who follows my pet Twitter, which isn't very many people, but I do post updates on there as well. Thank you to all of you who are supportive of me and my reptile, amphibian, and <laughs> reptile and amphibian and overall animal loving journey. Um, I am so excited to 
you know, just keep bringing you along and showing you everything I'm doing. I genuinely don't think I would have been able to get the tree frogs I wanted if I weren't doing what I was doing um, today, meaning I, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to get the tree frogs if I hadn't like moved to California and gone to the expo and been getting more into the reptile community because I feel so welcomed into it. So thank you all of you for welcoming me, welcoming me into the reptile and pet community. I thank you guys so much. It's It's been so fun and I can't wait to keep this journey up. And I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Spotty, Dottie, and Spec. They are my current little loving babies. Obviously, I love all my babies, but I've been giving them a little extra attention because, you know, I love them and I want to ensure that they're doing well. So once again, thank you all so much. I can't wait to see you next time and I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, whatever time it is. Have a great week in general. Um, see you next time. Bye.